The Apple ecosystem is unique in how well the various devices work together for a wide array of tasks. Over the past year, I've spent an absurd amount of money on Apple products trying to figure out what combination of this infamous ecosystem will work best, and what purposes each of the various devices serve. This video is the conclusion I came to. To explain my Apple ecosystem setup, I'll go over each specific product I have and the purpose it serves. I won't go into much depth as I've made separate videos on all of these products that will be linked in the description below. Foremost and arguably the most important to the entire ecosystem is the iPhone, as it's what gives most of my other devices a cellular connection. I primarily use my iPhone for social media browsing, texting friends and family, recording these videos, and checking my YouTube analytics. When writing the script, I was surprised by how little I actually use my iPhone, but in the day and age of being able to text and FaceTime on a MacBook, there isn't much need to use an iPhone very often, if at all. Speaking of MacBooks, my personal computer that drives pretty much everything I do for school and this channel is the highest end version of the MacBook Pro with an i9, 16 gigs of RAM, and a Radeon 550M. There is more spec'd out versions of these MacBooks, but of all the versions of the MacBooks Apple sells, this is the highest end package they have. And it was definitely one of the best investments I made for this channel as when combined with the desktop monitor, it's allowed me to edit videos twice as fast and higher resolution when compared to my base version of the MacBook Pro I had before. Aside from editing videos for this channel, I use the MacBook to get schoolwork done, send about half my texts, send all my emails, browse the web, and occasionally create thumbnails for this channel. However, with my recent investment into an iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, the use of my MacBook to create thumbnails has decreased drastically as I started to understand how to use Photoshop in more depth on the iPad. I primarily use my iPad to watch movies on its amazing display play the occasional video game, take notes, tests, and quizzes for school, and as I mentioned, create thumbnails for this channel. And so far, I've been really impressed with how well it's worked to complete every one of those tasks in an efficient manner. Overall, I'm satisfied with my purchase of the 11-inch iPad Pro in combination with the Apple Pencil. Moving on to my Series 6 Apple Watch, I mainly use this little feat of engineering to track my workouts, check the weather, ask Siri to send a text, check the date, set an alarm, sometimes set reminders and mark them as completed, and finally, surprise surprise, check the time. Overall, at first I didn't think the Apple Watch would be very useful. However, over time, as I discovered how useful Siri in combination with the well-optimized watch face can be, I've fallen in love with just how functional the Apple Watch can truly be. And overall, I would definitely recommend buying one for anyone in need of a watch that can help them be more productive. And I would recommend getting a Series 5 as the Series 6 isn't worth the premium over the previous iterations of the Apple Watch. Then my trackpad and keyboard in combination with my monitor are used to seamlessly turn my laptop into a desktop display. They have gotten much, much more use than I originally anticipated since school shut down and I started to use and write longer scripts. I use both of them for the same purpose I use my laptop's trackpad and keyboard for and overall I'm really satisfied with how they turned out and would recommend them to anyone considering turning their laptop into a desktop setup. However, that's only if you have a MacBook and are already invested into the Apple ecosystem. At first, I was skeptical of the HomePod Mini's actual usefulness in everyday life. However, after having several for over a month, I can confidently say they are well worth the investment if you work from home. I primarily use the HomePod Minis around my house to listen to music while I work, set reminders, and send texts. A seemingly small feature set on the surface, however, I do these tasks several times a day and the ability to do them all hands-free has definitely saved me a lot of time. And over the next year or so, that will likely add up to giving me more free time at the end of the day. Before COVID, my AirPods Pro saw constant use throughout the day while I was in class. However, now that I do near everything from home, there's no need to use the AirPods for listening to music or podcasts as I can just play them on my HomePod minis around the house. However, that's not to say the AirPods Pro aren't useful, they're just not useful during this current stage of the pandemic. Last and definitely use the least, I have a pair of Beats Studio 3 wireless I got for free with my original MacBook Pro I had as Apple was holding a deal for back to school back in 2018. I only use these as a backup to my AirPods Pro in case they break, and they have broken before, and occasionally when I go to the gym alone, otherwise they just sit and collect dust. In conclusion, while the Apple ecosystem can be extremely expensive, in the day and age of almost everything being done from home, I'd say it's worth the investment now more than ever if the various devices they can offer meet your needs. Also, please do consider subscribing as only 3% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed and any support really does help.